guys, it's Heather, the Butterfly Effect, plant-based extreme weight loss, with another little bite of brain food for you. And if you're wondering what brain food is, I believe that every day you need to feed your body good, healthy, plant-based, unprocessed, vegan food. And I believe that every day you need to feed your mind and your spirit with some brain food, something to think about, something to motivate you, and also some soul food, which is taking care of your spiritual life, because we are body, mind, spirit. And so brain food is anything that motivates me. Could be a book, could be a YouTube video, could be um, an audio podcast that I found inspiring or someone's story that I come across. And so today I want to share a book with you called Never Binge Again by Glenn Livingston, PhD. And it is reprogramming your mind to think like a thin person. So there was a lot of things I liked about this book and there were a couple things that I did not like at all. And so um, it's a mixed bag. One of the things I really liked about this book is that it's free. You can get it free on Kindle, free at the Barnes and Noble Nook. Um, you can also get a PDF for free from his website, which is neverbingeagain.com. And there's a lot of extra freebies that he has on that uh, website also. So you can get all of those there. And um, so free is a great price, right? That's one of the um, things that I really liked about it. Okay. So the basic concept is that we take the part of our brain that is the fat-seeking, pleasure-seeking brain. Um, in psychological terms, you could call it the id, um, the addict brain. You could think of it as the saboteur. But that part of your brain, and you personify it and give it a name, and you would then um, rec learn to recognize when it is asking for things instead of things that support your highest good. So that part of our brains um, doesn't know what is for the highest good. It only knows what it wants and it wants it now. You know, it's your impulsive part of your brain that doesn't think things through, okay? And so Glenn Livingston calls that part of the brain the pig. And he continues the metaphor. He says, the food that you choose not to eat, that's pig slop. Um, you make the pig squeal. You know, you, um, If you have thoughts that are um, not going to serve you, that that's considered pig squeal. Okay. So this gives me problems as an ethical vegan, right? Um, I love pigs. I love all animals. Um, you guys have met my rescue pets, but I really like pigs. They're very smart. They're, in they're more intelligent than dogs and they're very friendly and very social and they're lovable. And, um, I, I love pigs. And so he'll say things in there like cage the pig and make it suffer. <laughs> And so, you know, I had a real problem with that. The way he talks about how we are to react to the pig, the only thing I could react to in that way would be the devil. Seriously, like make it suffer and it only wants you to suffer and it's never for your highest good. It only wants to hurt you. You know, the only thing I can think of that would be an embodiment of that in my mind would be like a devil. Okay. Um, Susan Pierce Thompson, who is the founder of the bright line eating, um, way of eating, you know, well, she, she <laughs> I feel like she co-opted the 12 step movement and she, um, added a lot of brain science. Um, which is awesome. I, you know, if that works for you, that's great. But anyway, she calls it the saboteur. Uh, I like that a lot better because a saboteur is never for your highest good. I remember back in the day, um, 
a similar book with a similar concept and it was called Taming the Feast Beast. And it was a very similar concept and I, I adopted it back then and it really has been helpful for me. Um, they call it the beast. I call it, um, I've always called it my brat because I think of it like um, the brat wants what she wants when she wants it and she doesn't care about the consequences. Um, and that, that has been true. And um, I like the idea of a brat um, or, you know, a little kid, your inner child, however you want to think of it, even the saboteur, because I want to react to that person with compassion. I react to that person by trying to protect her. Um, if I think of myself as, um, as that part of my brain being like my inner child that needs, um, that might think that she wants pizza and candy, but what she really needs is a walk and some more sleep and some healthy salad, um, I can react with a lot more compassion. And when she asks for things that aren't for her highest good, I can protect her from poison. So rather than pig slop, I, I use the thought about poison um, and, and I think of myself as a protector instead of somebody that's making somebody suffer because that doesn't go with my essential nature. That doesn't, that doesn't work for me. Um, so didn't like the pig analogy, but I like the concept. So basically by learning to identify those thoughts and where they're coming from, from your, let's call it saboteur, that's a pretty good um, way of looking at it, or from your your brat is what I've always called um, my my voice that isn't for my highest good. Um, by learning to identify those thoughts, you can realize those are not your thoughts. And um, that one of the things that he really drives home is that that pig or that saboteur has no power. They have no arms. They have no legs. They can't drive to the store to go get the food you have the power and you are constantly in charge. And he says, um, I like the point also that he makes, that he makes, it's like, all you have to do to never binge again is never binge again. Just, and that sounds like it's making it too simplistic and I encourage you to read the book, but it is true that if you clearly define what is a binge and um, he encourages you to do this for yourself, so he encourages you to make a list of um, always behaviors, never foods or behaviors, um, conditional foods or behaviors. So for instance, um, and always for me is that I always eat at least a pound of vegetables for breakfast. And I always do that. I do that every single day. That's a non-negotiable. And a never for me is I never eat an animal product. I never eat sugar or flour or oil ever, ever, ever. Those are nevers for me. And if I ever hear uh, something requesting a brownie or some pasta or some pizza or something like that, I instantly know that that's not my voice. That is the voice of my saboteur. And I can just say no. That's not, um, that is not what we're doing. <laughs> I'm following my rules. And so he gives a whole explanation for what to do if you need to tweak your food plan and you find that it's not working for you. There's a whole process that you go through um, to tweak it. And uh, I like that it makes it flexible so that somebody who's following any kind of an eating plan can use this same method. Um, one thing that I think is interesting is that I know that Glenn Livingston himself is a plant-based eater, although he may not have been when he was um, writing the book. But he is a plant-based eater, and so the whole thing about the pig and making the pig suffer, um, I don't get that. <laughs> but oh well. I know not every plant-based eater is an ethical vegan, but Anyway, could have come up with a better metaphor to me. Um, and 
if you can get past that, I think you can get a lot out of this book. Um, I think that this is a really effective tool for um, anybody who has an addiction to processed food, okay, to the refined carbohydrates. So Chef AJ practices this um, where they're you know, we're, we're unconditional. We don't make exceptions. We're unexceptional. You don't make exceptions. If something is, um, uh, if you're being abstinent, you're abstinent all the time at all times. And if you have a bad day, you just resume, you just get right back on it. But, um, you don't listen to those thoughts. You know that those thoughts aren't for your highest good. And I encourage you and just shut it down. Like the minute you start to hear or start to think a thought that doesn't serve you, you know, it says in the Bible, take every thought hostage. And I think of that, like, I don't choose to thank you. I, I am not letting that thought go by. Um, what you think becomes your beliefs and what you believe becomes your habits and your habits determine your behavior and they determine your outcome. Um, so you just got to catch those thoughts. So when you start to feel like you're, um, feeling sorry for yourself because everybody else can have X, Y, Z, you can't have it, or you don't choose to have it, you know, are you going to have their heart disease? Are you going to have their cancer? So no, I will not choose to trade, um, poison for not feeling left out. I just won't. And so um, he talks a lot about that. He talks about all the different ways your pigs can squeal and goes through all the different, you know, objections that you might have. For instance, um, he says that when you, um, when you blow it and you go off your plan and then your pig will start talking to you and saying, you already blew it. So let's eat all the stuff. Let's have a great binge, you know? Um, that is pig squeal. That is, that is your saboteur talking to you. That is not for your highest good. And so we don't listen to that. We just get right back on. And, um, he says also your pig is going to show that that's evidence that you are weak willed and that you can't stick to it. And, um, again, that doesn't work. That's pig squeal too. So we're, we're not going to believe that. And, and, um, he also kind of interestingly doesn't believe in counting days. Um, like, you know, some of the other abstinence or 12 step programs, he says, if you're counting days, it's because you're keeping track of how long it's going to be till you mess up. And he doesn't think that that's productive. So anyway, I think that you would like this book. If the whole pig thing doesn't bug you, I think you could get a lot out of this book. Um, I really like this concept and I've been using this concept for a while. Um, I really believe in abstinence. Um, I really believe that it's much easier to just never have a food that gave you problems than to try to control your use or moderate your use of it. So I agree with him on that. So, hey, check it out. It's free. Um, get And let me know what you think. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Um, was it inspiring for you? Uh, also, I do have the Audible version, and if anybody, same deal I told you guys with Then From Within, if you have never gotten a free Audible book shared with you, I can share this one with you for free. So I, I think it might even, it might be very cheap. Um, he wrote this book, he even says, as like uh, a marketing kind of a thing, and so that's why he gives you so many freebies. Um, he's does a lot of coaching. He's an entrepreneur. So, um, you know, I found it valuable. I'm, I'm happy to be marketed to, <laughs> I think as long as you're giving people value and he's upfront about it, he wrote a blog post about it. So that's why everything's free. Um, so anyway, check it out. It's called never binge again. Uh, reprogram reprogramming your mind to think like a thin person by Glenn Livingston PhD and I will talk to you guys soon with some more brain food talk to you soon bye bye